The hilly region of the Himalayas of India, Nepal and Bhutan is known as the Pirai region. We are right now in the last village of the country known as Bhorishal district, Balrampur. There are about 195 people who live in this village who live in 24 homes made of clay and mud. These people are of the Tharu community and they live so With deforestation and cultivation increasing, a permeable mixture of gravel, boulders and sand evolves which leads to a sinking water table. But where layers consist of clay and fine sediments, the groundwater rises to the surface and heavy sediment is washed out, thus enabling frequent and massive floods during monsoons. Why exactly is it called the Tarai region? The Tarai region is a swampy area of India and Nepal. It is a lowland region in southern Nepal and northern India that lies south of the outer foothills of the Himalayas, the Shivalik Hills and north of the Indo-Gangetic Plain. This lowland belt is characterized by tall grasslands scrub savanna, sal forests and clay-rich swamps. In northern India, the Tarai spreads from the Yamuna River eastward across Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. It is part of the Tarai Dwar savanna and grassland ecoregion. The districts that fall under the Tarai region include Pilibhit, Lakhimpur Khiri, Behraich, Shravasti, Balrampur, Siddharth Nagar and Maharaj Ganj. The origin of the Tharu people is not clear but surrounded by myths and oral tradition. The Rana Tharus claim to be of Rajput origin and have migrated from the Thar desert to Nepal's far western Tarai region. Tharu people further east claim to be descendants of the Sakyant Kolia peoples living in Kapilavastu. हम इस वक्त चंदनपुर गांव में हैं और हमारे साथ है राम सुंदर जी जो कि थारु समुदाय के हैं और शिक्षक भी हैं स्वागत है आपका थारु समुदाय की उत्पत्ति कहां से हुई थारु समुदाय जैसा कि नाम ही है थारु थारु का अर्थ ही होता है कि ठहरना अलग-अलग विद्वानों ने अलग-अलग लेखकों ने उसका अलग-अलग तरीके से अपना-अपना विचार उन्होंने व्यक्त किया है लेकिन वास्तव में मैं लेखकों के और विद्वानों के उनके कथनों पे मैं नहीं जाता जो मैं जिस समुदाय से हूं और जो मैं वास्तविक रूप से मैं देख रहा हूं जान रहा हूं कि थारु अपने आप को महाराणा प्रताप का वंशज मानता है राजस्थान में थार का मरुस्थल है और महाराणा प्रताप जी वहां उदयपुर एक स्थान है और वहां राजस्थान के लोगों की और हम लोगों की पहनावा खानपान लगभग मिलती जुलती है और हमारे थारु लोग झारखंड से लेकर के उत्तरांचल तक सभी ये पर्वत के और सीमावर्ती 
नेपाल के सीमावर्ती क्षेत्रों में ही ये लोग बसे हुए हैं और ये कहा भी गया है कि महाराणा प्रताप जी जब युद्ध कर रहे थे तो उनके साथ में युद्ध करते करते अपने वंश को बचाने के लिए अपने अस्तित्व को बचाने के लिए जंगल में आकर के छुप गए और आज भी ये इतिहास गवाह है कि महाराणा प्रताप जी को कहते हैं कि घास की रोटी वो खाते थे घास की रोटी खा करके उन्होंने युद्ध किया संघर्ष किया मुगलों से और आज भी हमारे थारू के लोग जंगल पर ही निर्भर हैं जंगल से ही काफ़ी चीज़ जैसे ईंधन से लेकर के यहाँ तक कि हम लोग सब्जी तक जंगल से ही लाते रहते हैं द थारूज फ्रॉम तेराय रीजन परफॉर्म द झूमर डांस विथ ग्रेट प्लेजर इन दिस डांस वुमेन फॉर्म अ सर्कल एंड सिंक सॉन्ग्स टू स्पेंड देर टाइम This is a very popular dance among women. All of this jewelry is really heavy to carry, and I have to admit that I have all the respect for these women of the Tharu community who wear them every single time on their special occasion. And let me say, all of them have a very significant meaning. This is also performed as a folk game by women, accompanied by folk songs and dances. This dance form is performed on special festive occasions like the Bada Dasin. which is the most important of all terai festivals this dance has several local variations such as the jhumri jhumra and dhumar dhumra Bahrain is rich in culture whether it is in architecture craft art religion language food etc with its close proximity to lucknow bahrain is not in the front line of development and commercialization however with the resources available in bahrain there is great scope and it's an untapped market The people of Bahrain live close to nature with more than 80% engaged in agriculture or related sectors. Most of the people in Bahrain speak Hindi and Urdu. Islam is the widely practiced religion in Bahrain, followed by Hinduism, Christianity, Buddhism, Sikhism and Jainism. Shravasti The north eastern town of Uttar Pradesh is located near the West Rapti River. This town is closely associated with the life of Gautam Buddh, who is believed to have spent 24 chaturmasas here. Age-old stupas, majestic viharas and several temples near the village of Sahet Mahet establish Buddha's association with Shravasti. According to Nagarjuna The city had a population of 900,000 in 5th century BCE and it even overshadowed Magadh's capital Rajgir. Shravasti is situated in the foothills of the Himalayas. Located just 40 kilometers from the border district of Bahrain, this is at the Indo-Nepal border. This district of Uttar Pradesh has been identified as the Buddhist shrine in the corner of the world today. The name of this district is named after the sage Shravasti. Behind me is Kachikuti which was built in the 12th century BC and right here behind me is the cave of Angulimal. As mentioned in the Brahmakalp, 
and various cults of the 14th century, the name of the city was Mahid. There are subsequent mentions showing that the name of this city was Sahet Mahit. It is also mentioned that a vast fort covered this city in which there were many temples having idols of Dev Kulikas. Today, a great rampant of earth and brick surrounds this city. During excavation in Sahet Mahit near Shravasti city, many ancient idols and inscriptions were found. They are now kept in museums of Mathura and Lucknow. At present, the archaeological department of the Indian government is doing excavation to perform allied research. Lakhimpur Khiri is the largest district of Uttar Pradesh. Here you will find the Dudhwa National Park which is the home to many animal and bird species. Its borders are very close to Nepal and here you will find the Tharu tribals who are known for their humble and natural living. Lakhimpur district is the largest district in Uttar Pradesh and is on the border of Nepal. Its administrative capital is the city of Lakhimpur. Dudhwa National Park is in Lakhimpur Khiri and is the only national park in Uttar Pradesh. Siddharth Nagar district is also famous for the cultivation of Kala Namak rice, which is a short grain scented variety of rice and its aroma is said to be a gift of Lord Buddha. This rice has also been given the geographical indication GI tag by the government of India in 2013 to define area of origin, which is a stretch of 65 kilometers along the Nepal border in Siddharth Nagar district. We are right now in Maharaj Ganj, which lies on the borders of India and Nepal. Now, the borders of this district touch Nepal in the north, Gorakhpur in the south, Padrona in the east and Siddharth Nagar in the west. This place is famous for its Horia dance, which is performed by the Tharu community on the occasion of Holi. And during its performance, the participants throw colours at each other. Maharaj Ganj district came into existence on 2nd October 1989. This district is situated at the Indo-Nepal border. Its boundaries touch Nepal estate in north, Gorakhpur district in south, Padrona district in east and Siddharth Nagar and Sant Kabir Nagar districts in west. Its shape is rectangular. This dance takes place during the Dashera festival in the Tirai to honour Goddess Durga. Young girls dance with burning lamps on top of water vessels balanced on their heads. It is a nighttime routine that requires excellent balance and skill on the dancer's part. Performed on moonlit nights from midnight to dawn during the monsoon months, it is a popular dance of India's North Bihar and of Nepal's Mithila region, Janakpur. Kushinagar, which is close to Gorakhpur, is part of the famous Buddhist circuit. According to Buddhist traditions, it was earlier named Kushavati. Due to abundance of kush grass found in this region. However, modern Kushinagar came into prominence in the 19th century with archaeological excavations carried out by Alexander Cunningham, the first archaeological surveyor of India and later followed by C.L. Carlyle, who exposed the main stupa and also discovered 
a 6.10 meters long statue of reclining Buddha in 1876. It's been a pleasure to be in Kushinagar all this while and we are with uh, Mr. TK Roy who has spent about 26 years of his life living in this city. We're here to get to know a little more about the city from you. Tell us something about this city. Okay. This Kushinagar uh, actually is the place of Mahaparinirvana of Gautam Buddha. And uh, now recently it is being developed this place is declared as a holy city first priority is this this temple area this area is declared as holy city and here no animals to be chopped no alcohol or wine to be allowed here so this is declared by the district administration first thing second thing this is the place where all the pilgrims come so pilgrims nearly 98% and 2% tourists and other people so here you find a, in the season which season we call from august till march we call it tourist season at that time you find a holy approach here mm. all the pilgrims coming and ye log puja karte hai koi bare foot they are walking mm. mandir pe jate hai some of them very devout mm. and some they come for for uh, to learn the culture and see the place mm. and see india in fact and uh, some of them they like to test food buy things like this different tourists they come here simultaneously here in the meantime there are several monasteries come up okay. different countries they started building their monasteries thailand yeah. myanmar vietnam chinese Cambodia mm -hmm. and then uh, Sri Lanka mm -hmm. so this all monasteries they have they keep their own monks okay all the mon monasteries they have their own country monks and they have different different culture in respective monasteries so that means a lot of food also a lot of food also they have different foods uh, different language so when you enter in say uh, Myanmar temple we say menglaba namaste in hindi we say menglaba mm -hmm. so same thing if we go to thai temple we get swadi khab mm -hmm. so same thing in different language we approach if you go to say korean temple we have korean temple also honsan uh, bida thomsan bida so if we go to japan temple konochiba so different language we greet everybody so here also you'll find all the boys and shopkeepers and vendors they learn that these languages mm. they can even interact with the people in uh, local in their languages now they we are different when the tourists come different tourists different pilgrims they we are different clothes mm. so you find a different culture here in the season now of course only indian people at the same time these monasteries monks they come out for begging foods mm. in occasions especially in full moons mm. they come with their begging bowls they ask food so gradually everybody gives before only we were giving now many buddhists are here so they offer foods so they offer their own prepared foods maybe sometimes litti chokha mm. they eat that happily uh, sometimes thali rice dal chapati mm. sabji lauki ka sabji mm. khate hai acha se achar fir khate hai at the same time they also invite us in their celebrations oh, wow. so we go there and we taste their food also like you know they keep uh, uh, vegetarian also non veg also mm. thai fish beautiful thai fish sometimes thai soup mm. burmese you know you say khao sue khao sue they call chow mein like khao sue so we we taste all this so it is a mixed environment here and mixed culture mixed language and you see that we learn from each other in fact wonderful <laughs> so i think in one line if we have to sum this up uh, kushinagar is a place which is known for its unity in yes. diversity unity and diversity exactly exactly this is pretty cool thank you so much roy You're sir welcome. You're welcome. for your time thank you desh bidesh mein bhai le parchar ho जन जन में भावे लागल बुद्ध
दुख के विचार हो ओ देश विदेश में भैले परिचार हो जन जन में भावे लगल बुद्ध के विचार भैल निर्वाण कुशी नगरिया में भई निर्वाण कुशी नगरिया में जल घूमि आई बुद्ध के नगरिया में चल घूमि आई बुद्ध के नगरिया में बड़ा सुख चैन मिली ओ डगरिया में बड़ा सुख चैन मिली ओ डगरिया में चल घूमि आई बुध के नगरिया 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 कुशीनगर का इतिहास हजारों साल पुराना है आइए इस जगह के इतिहास और संस्कृति को और बेहतर समझते हैं हिज होलीनेस वेलरेबल ए ए ए बी ज्ञानेश्वर जी के साथ थैंक यू सो मच हिज होलीनेस आपने हमें अपना टाइम दिया कुशीनगर के इतिहास के बारे में प्लीज़ हमें इन्लाइटन कीजिए ये कुशीनगर है नम टो पे कुशीनगर नहीं था ये कुशीनगर को कहा जाता है माठा कुंवर अंग्रेज लोग आक्रमण करने के बाद अंग्रेज थे पूरा हिंदुस्तान में रास्ता वगैरह कुछ नहीं था हम लोग पाली ग्रंथों में देखा जाता है महाबन महाबन बहुत बड़ा जंगल बहुत बड़ा जंगल बोल के देखा जाता है तो अंग्रेज आने के बाद सबसे पहले पश्चिम से रेल का रास्ता बनाने की कोशिश किया था कराची से लाहौर को रेल रास्ता बनाया गया रेल रास्ता बनाते बनाते चला गया तो एक जंगल में बहुत बड़ा खानदान मिला वो खानदान रख दिया गया फिर आगे गया आगे भी एक खानदान मिला पहले खानदान का नाम है मोहनजोद्रो दूसरा खानदान का नाम है हरापा दोनों खानदान को मिलने के बाद अंग्रेजों ने पूरा हिंदुस्तान में व्यापारी खेती वाला सरकारी अधिकारी सब मिल के एशियन आर्कोलॉजिकल सोसाइटी बोल के बना गया था माथा कुंवर कोट तीन शब्द है माथा माने क्या है माथा माने मता शब्द से आया होगा कुंवर मान क्या है को माने कुमार शब्द से आया होगा कोट कोट माने टीला माठा कुंवर का कोट मटा कुमारा टीला ये तीन दस शब्द से एकता मुबारी भोरी दूसरे पियावा गैलन रे चोरी अरे सखिया रे तीसरे बिरह से दहिया Kapil Vastu was the ancient capital of the Shakya clan whose ruler was Shuddhodhan. He was the father of the Buddha. Therefore Lord Buddha is also referred to as Shakya Muni. The Shakya domain was one of the 16th Mahajanpads of the 6th century BC. Prince Gautam as Lord Buddha as we know him now left his palace in Kapil Vastu at the age of 29 and revisited it 12 years later after attaining enlightenment. The Rai region has been an amalgamation of the Hindu, Muslim and Buddhist cultures and represents the mosaic of the region. Buddhist texts such as the Pali Canon claim that Kapilavastu was the childhood home of Gautam Buddh on account of it being the capital of the Shakyas over whom his father ruled. This little village of Piparahwa in Siddharthnagar district is a very important Buddhist pilgrimage 
since Lord Buddha had spent the first 29 years of life in this region. Our journey of culture has taken us far and wide. We are currently at the border of India and Nepal, where there's Nepal on one side, there's India on the other side. The culture of the two nations are very, very similar. And not to miss out, this is the Buddha circuit. And this border is known as Kapil Vastu. We have the SSB Jawans posted right here who work day and night relentlessly to protect our nation. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Dance and music is food for the soul in the Tarai belt. In the foothills of the Himalayas, where nature shows its beauty in all its glory, the magic of the Rai region of Uttar Pradesh is a treat for the eyes and a balm for the soul. A place where nature and wildlife coexist in harmony. <laughs> <laughs> 